how to make a Minecraft server in 1.20.4. We're gonna go over everything here, but the server we're making in this video is not a 24 hour server, meaning it's only up and running while your computer's up and running. It's also only meant for your friends, your family, people that you trust. And that is because this is on your own internet connection, meaning anybody who gets the IP address of this server can do things like DDoS you, which basically means hit your internet offline, as well as figure out where you lived under your latitude and longitude coordinates. Lastly, you're gonna need a pretty good computer and internet connection in order to host this server. That's because it's using your own computer's hardware in order to run the server as well as have you play Minecraft and all of that stuff. However, what if you don't have any of that? What if you want the simplest and easiest way to start a server where you don't have to worry about hardware, DDoS, where there's live chat support that you can reach out to if you do have any issues with your server? Well, guess what? That's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your very own DDoS protected Minecraft server for you and your friends. At Simple Game Hosting, you can easily add mods, plugins, and mod packs to your server. There's even a one-click mod pack installer allowing you to add hundreds of mod packs quickly and easily. Like I said before, if there is any issues with your server, for example, you've added a mod, things just aren't working correctly, well then there's expert live chat support that you can reach out to and get help with your server. So stop struggling to host a server on your own computer and on your own hardware where you have to worry about lag and things like that and come start your server at Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below. The breakdown .xyz slash simple and start your server in less than 5 minutes, not 15 minutes like this video. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get your server started. If you don't want to start one with Simple Game Hosting, you want to start one on your own computer, let's go ahead and do it. Now, first things first, you want to go to the second link in the description down below, and that takes you here. This is our in-depth text guide on making a Minecraft server. If you want to go through things in your own pace, this will allow you to do that. But what if you want to follow along with the video? Well, just scroll down and click the download Minecraft button here and to be taken to Minecraft's official download page for the Minecraft server jars. This is where we're going to download the server file that allows you to start the server. Specifically, we want the Minecraft underscore server 1.20.4 jar here. Hover over this, click on it, and the download will begin. You may need to keep or save this file depending on your browser. It's 100% safe to do that though because we're downloading this from Minecraft.net, Mojang and well, Minecraft's official website. With that downloaded, we can go ahead and minimize our browser and go ahead and make a new folder on our desktop. So I'm going to right click, create a new folder. I'm going to name this simplegamehosting.com because that's the quickest and easiest way to start a Minecraft server. And then we want to move the file we downloaded into this folder. Now for me, that's going to be found in our downloads folder here. And we have this server.jar. Drag and drop this into the simplegamehosting.com folder we created and then open up that folder. Now, you should be able to double click this file and start your server. But if for whatever reason you can't, you need to download Java 17. Java 17 is required for Minecraft servers. And this video goes over everything you need to know to get it. It's really simple. You just click on download here and then download the Windows version for the X64 installer and then run it like you would any other program to install Java. You may also need to run the jar fix. And what this is going to do is take all the jar files from your computer, link them back together and make them work with Java. So basically you're linking Java and the jar files, but first get Java, then run the jar fix. Nevertheless, at this point, we can go ahead and double click on that server file. Now yours may not have .jar at the end of it. If you want it to say .jar, just click view up at the top and then click file name extensions, right like so. Now let's go ahead and double click on that and the files for the server will start to generate. Now you're looking for the eula.txt file. Might take it a few seconds to get there, but there it is for me, eula.txt. Go ahead and open this up and assuming you agree to the Minecraft eula here, which we do, we want to change eula equals false here to eula equals true, T-R-U-E exactly like that because we do agree with the eula. Then click file save and with that we can now double click the server.jar file and our Minecraft server will start. Now at this point, you're the only person that can join your server, but I would recommend doing that. Go ahead and join it just to make sure things are working correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and launch up Minecraft 1.20.4 and I will see you on the Minecraft main menu to join this server that, as you can see here, is now fully started and good to be joined. So we'll see you to do that. So here we are. Minecraft is now open and so is the server. If we want to join this server, we can go to multiplayer and proceed. Then we're going to add this server. So we're going to click add server here and the server name can be anything you want. I'm going to name it local 
connection because only you can join this because it's your local connection. And then for the IP address, the server address here, we're just going to enter in local host, right? Like so. So the server address is local host. Click done and boom, there it is, local connection. This is this server. When we double click on it, we'll see us join in on the left-hand side over here, right like so. We are now on this server. I would suggest running around a little bit, making sure there's no lag, no issues. If there is lag, it might be because your hardware just can't host a server and play Minecraft at the same time. So keep that in mind. You might just not be able to host a server. And if you're lagging with just you on the server, then your friends definitely will cause some lag on the server, unfortunately. Also, if you're seeing a bunch of you can't server can't keep up messages over here just repeatedly, if you see one, that's not a big deal. But if you see it over and over and over again, that's another indication that the server is lagging and having issues. Nevertheless, let's go ahead. We're good here. We can join this, but how do we allow our friends to join the server? Well, in order to do that, we're going to need to port forward. And I do want to say, you don't have to port forward on a host like Simple Game Hosting. Meaning that at Simple Game Hosting, you just purchase your server and you can join it. You don't have to do any of this port forwarding mess to allow your friends to join. And this is the hardest part of starting a Minecraft server. But once you get through port forwarding, your friends will be able to join your server. No issues whatsoever. So let's go ahead and do it. First things first, we're going to close out of Minecraft. We're also going to want to stop the server over here. So come over here and in this, you know, text box, type stop, right like so and hit enter. That's going to shut down the server.properties right like that and make sure the server closes properly. Always, always, always make sure that you type stop and hit enter over there to close the server. Nonetheless, here's our server file. We actually don't need this right now. What we do need is to open up the command prompt by going to the start menu and typing in CMD. We'll have the command prompt here, open it up, and in the CMD we want to type IPCONFIG, IP config exactly like that, and hit enter. That's going to give us all sorts of information. We want two numbers from here. I'm going to make note of these numbers in Notepad, but you can make note of them anywhere. You just want to make sure that you can reference them later because we will need them later. The first number we need is our IPv4 address, and that's right here, IPv4 address, and for me that's 192.168.1.2. Yours is probably completely different, and that's that's why we're getting it like this instead of me giving you the numbers you need. The next thing we need is the default gateway, which for me is 192.168.1.1. Right here it is. Now yours may have numbers and letters in it. If that's the case, that's not what we want. We want the one that's directly under it. Usually there'll be one that's numbers and letters on top. And then under that, there'll be one that's just numbers. Get the one that's just numbers on the second line next to default gateway. Nevertheless, now that we have these, we can go ahead and open our browser. And in our browser, up here at the top where we would normally type in the breakdown.xyz, simplegamehosting.com, youtube.com, we want to type in 192.168.1.1, then hit enter. And some sort of login box is going to open up here. Now, this could be any sort of looking login box. Mine pops in from the top, yours could pop in from the center, yours could be in a you know nice web page style GUI. It doesn't matter, but you're gonna have some sort of login box here. What do you enter into the login box? Well, your router's username and password, and this is different from your Wi-Fi password, and this covers how to find your router's username and password. Start with method one, work your way down through contacting your ISP at method five. Don't worry, most people find it by method three or four and you don't have to contact your ISP, but work through this list in order to find your router's username and password, then come back to your router and log in. I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will meet you on my router and I'm going to give you some different terms you can look for when you're port forwarding. I'm also going to give you some guides that you can look at for port forwarding as well. There we go. I'm now logged into my router. Your router probably looks completely different and hey, that's perfectly okay because I'm going to be giving you the common terms for port forwarding. And of course, we've got this, which is how to port forward on any router. It goes through port forwarding on all the top routers that are out there today from Netgear and AT&T to Verizon and Asus. It covers it all. All the different routers that are out there are covered in this. So watch this video. And even if your specific router is not in there, you probably are going to watch that video and pick up a lot of terms and specific things that it could be in your router. So it may be worth checking out for that reason. But nevertheless, for me, it's in advanced and then advanced again, and then port forwarding slash port triggering. For you, it could be in the advanced tab, the administration tab, the security tab, the apps and gaming tab, the NAT forwarding tab, NAT forwarding, or the NAT gaming tab, NAT gaming. It could be in a firewall, a security, a single port forwarding, a port forwarding slash port triggering, options, any of those. It could also be in the setup, advanced, administration, or I think I've said like three times security tab. So just look around your router. It's hard to break stuff. You can't really break much of anything on your router, 
All you want to do is just click around until you find port forwarding. For me, that's port forwarding slash port triggering. And then once you find port forwarding, I'm going to go ahead and add a new port forward, add a custom service in this case. But for you, you may just have a big list of empty boxes. If that's the case, start with the first one. For the service name or ID on your port forward, just name it Minecraft or Minecraft server, whatever you want, just so you know what this port forward is for. What is new this Minecraft Java in this case? For protocol, TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or the word both. You want to make sure that both of these are selected, and it could literally be the word both. If you can't, for whatever reason, select both, make sure you do this twice. Once for TCP, then do the everything else the same, and again for UDP. Luckily, I and most routers out there do allow you to select both, right like so. Now, for anything involving the word port, external port, internal port, first port, second port, outside port, inside port, doesn't matter whatever it is called. It could also be called local port, public port, anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, enter in 25565, right like so. And hey, this next one, guess what? Internal port. Nick said, anytime I see that word port, it's going to be 25565. So that's what it is here as well. For your internal or local IP address, this is going to be 192.168.1. Whatever your IPv4 address is, that's what this is going to be. So for me, it's 192.168.1.2. But for you, it could be any other number. So whatever yours is, 10.148.1.7. It doesn't matter what it is. This is going to be your IPv4 address that we found earlier. That is if you have the option for an internal or local or inside IP address. If you don't, you may just have a drop down box or a list of all the devices connected to your network. That's actually what I have. And I can find here my computer 192.168.1.2 right here and select it as well. So I have both options, but whatever you have, select either the device you're starting the server on or enter in your local IPv4 address. Now, for most of you, you're done. Your port forward is finished. For some of you, you have an outside, external, or public IP listed in your port forward. If you do have that, I'm going to show you how to get it. But hey, don't 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 click away if you don't because you need that for your friends to join your server. Your public IP address is what your friends are going to use to join the server. So let's go ahead and get that for that reason as well. Otherwise, go ahead and save, apply. Make sure you keep your port forward uh, by applying it, saving it, all that stuff. But in the description down below, we have this, which is what's my IP address. And this is going to show you your public IP. Now, for me, all you can see is 4.3 at the end because uh, the rest of it's private. You don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody. If you do want a server that's more public, use a host like Simple Game Hosting. But you can see the information you can get from your public IP, your region, your city, your latitude and longitude coordinates all from this IP address. Go ahead though and click on it to copy it and then you're good to go. If you needed this for your port forward, come back over here and enter it in. Otherwise, we can go ahead and minimize our browser and we can join our server using the public IP. To do that, we need to go ahead and start the server first by double clicking that server.jar and we need to launch up Minecraft. So I will see you on the Minecraft main menu to again join this server. So here we are in the Minecraft main menu, just like joining the server that's local here or any other Minecraft server. I'm going to go ahead and click on multiplayer and proceed. Then we're going to want to go ahead and add a server again. We're going to name this one our public IP because, well, this is our public IP address. And when I paste this in, again, you can only see 4.3 at the end because you don't want to give this out to everyone. Then go ahead and click done, and we can see the public IP is here, and we can use that to join the server. So by doing that, we can double click on it and join. Now, I know this is going to work for me. It might not work for you, though. And the reason for that is because some internet service providers do not like you connecting back to yourself, which is what's happening when you join off of your public IP. You're sending a connection out and then coming back to you. That's weird, and some ISPs don't allow it. So if you can't join via your public IP, that's okay. The only people that have to do that are your friends. So send them your public IP. You will join off of that local host connection we used earlier in the video. But nevertheless, we are now on this server. We are good to go and we can start playing, right? We could send this to our friends. They could join it. We could start playing all of that stuff. Now, one thing that I will mention here is that what if your friends can't join, right? What if they went through all this, you've, you've port forwarded everything, you know the port forward is correct, they still can't join. Well, that could be due to Windows Defender, specifically the Windows Defender Firewall. Luckily, we've got a guide in the description on how to allow your friends through the Windows Defender Firewall. This covers everything you need to know to fix that. 
for Minecraft Java Edition servers. On top of that, we do have a link in the description down below on how to fix a broken Minecraft server. It's just 21 minutes of me fixing different issues that you could have with your Minecraft server. And as a server admin, worth checking out because, well, you eventually are going to have probably some sort of issue with the server and you will need to fix it. This video is helpful for that. Nevertheless, we also have this, which is how to add more RAM to your server. That's linked down below and will help you get more RAM on your server. Uh, if you do want to add more RAM, boost the performance a little bit, you can do that. However, it is worth noting, you a lot of times don't have to and things are good out of the gate when it comes to these vanilla servers you either have enough ram or you don't uh because it kind of uses a variable amount it's a little weird how that works but nevertheless here we are things are set up and what if you want to be able to like uh, you know do slash game mode on this server for example well you want to come over here and op yourself so type op and then your username no slashes or anything just op in your username make sure you're careful though who you give op to because while you can now do things like slash game mode creative you can also do things like slash stop and hit enter and close the server right like so, which you don't want to give everybody necessarily the access to do or make sure you trust those you give access to because uh, that is possible. But nevertheless, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more incredible content every single day of the week. My name is Nick. This is The Breakdown and we will see you in the next one. Peace.